I think when Jen invited me to come here, it was back like October, November. Yep. Jen plans ahead. She's yeah. good at that. <laughs> and she she asked me if I was to come out, you know, what, what subject would I like to talk about? And um, and I told her this was the subject that I'd like to talk about. Uh, at, at the time, October, November last year, there was a there was a big active public debate discussion uh, going on on the on the Joomla people site about proposed leadership structure changes. And I was right in the thick of it, for better or for worse. And uh, and so it was something that I felt strongly about, and, and it was top of mind for me, and I thought, okay, this is what I'd like to talk about. Um, it, it later occurred to me that the title of Overcoming Governance Challenges in the Joomla Project and Why You Should Care is maybe, um, you know, not the most passionate, exciting, thrilling, you know, big draw subject for a keynote speech. So I, to, to that extent, Jen, I apologize that I didn't come up with the sexiest title for the keynote. Um, it's great to see a full house here, and, I, and if, if I'm, I'm glad that in spite of my um, kind of plain subject that we still got a full house. Um, so I did think a little bit more later about, you know, what might be some better titles, better alternate titles for this talk. And the next thing I came up with was helping Joomla to reach its potential. And I think that one maybe has a little bit more of a draw, a little bit more of, a, an, of an interest, hopefully, to, the large, to a large, diverse crowd. And I thought a little bit more about, about it and thought that this is another uh, alternate subject uh, that, that Joomla is really at a crossroads and I think all of that ties in together too. Um, and so those are the things that I want to talk about this morning. I hope that it'll be of interest to you and uh, I hope that it'll give you an, an overview of kind of where I see the, the project going, what our challenges are and what our opportunities are to try to make things better. Um, I want to start off with our the missions. Joomla has a mission statement. I want to start off with what that is, and it's to, to develop an, a flexible platform for online publishing and collaboration. Pretty, uh, to me, it's it's about as thrilling and sexy as my original title for this keynote presentation. I think, in one sense, we've already done that. We've already accomplished that mission. And one of these days, when we work ourselves farther down the list, I'd like for us to have sort of a more ambitious, challenging mission statement that we can all rally around and tie in. But um, that's our mission statement for now. And so we're going to take a few minutes to just talk about how we're doing as a project in relation to that mission statement. Uh, I think by the measure that I'm going to choose to use this morning, Joomla is the second most popular free open source software content management system in the world. That's in terms of how many websites are, 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 have been tracked to be powered by um, open source content management systems. WordPress is number one with around 10%, I think, market share. Market share, that's not really a great term. Um, but. Um, share of, of websites that all uh, for the entire internet that are powered by yes sir yeah yeah you're fine yeah it's not necessarily open source it's all I like to I like to stress you know just that as an extra qualifier but that's a fair point thanks um, and and to that point if, if there's questions or comments while I'm talking, raise your hand and let's talk about them. And I'll, if I can get through this quick enough, then um, we'll leave some time this morning before um, we move on to other presentations for questions and answers too. Um, so I think the last statistics I saw said that Joomla had powered about 2.7% of the internet um, and Drupal around 2%. So Joomla is big. Uh, l next week we're going to hit a, a milestone of 30 million downloads for Joomla um, since we started. And uh, that doesn't include a lot of installations. It, it really under-reports, I think, how many 
times Joomla has been used over its history. Um, I won't go into well. Yeah, you could download and you could download mm -hmm. one copy of Joomla, um, and then work on it, push out multiple websites with it. Of course, if you've got a hosted service that uses Fantastico or another um, kind of auto installer of Joomla, then that all of those instances don't get included in that number. We've got an active demo site that uh, has thousands of users on it um, using Joomla for free. Um, that isn't reported on here, but anyway, we've got a we've got a lot of folks that have downloaded Joomla. Right now, we've got over 9,000 extensions um, that are on the Joomla extensions directory. Um, extensions to allow you to do more than what you can with the core Joomla service. We've got support for over 60 languages all over the world. We've got over a half a million forum members. We've won three PACT awards in the last six years for, uh, I think, two for best free open source software content management system and um, one for best open source PHP application, I think. I'm not quite sure about that, though. I should check that. Back. We've In 2011, we had almost 30 Joomla days all around the world. I think 28 is the right number for that. Um, we're expecting to have a lot more than that uh, here this year in 2012. So gatherings just like this happening all over the world every week, every month. Um, that that kind of demonstrates the active, strong interest in community uh, interest in Joomla. Now, on the other hand, there's some there's some challenges that we have, and I think that to put it in perspective. You know, we're all volunteers. That's kind of the, the, the good news and the bad news about Joomla in some, in some ways, and that's part of, the, part of the point of this talk, is how do we, as volunteers, try to do our best to help the project and the community move forward as best as can. Um, and so, just to kind of reflect that, I, I want to point to a few points made from a 2011 Water and Stone Content Management System Market Share Report. Uh, Water and Stone's a consulting firm that every year does a big survey about a number of different things. One of those surveys is about free open source content management systems, and I think they kind of direct it to, uh, for people who are interested in choosing a, a content management system for a website so that they can kind of see who's coming up, who's, who's struggling, who do I want to use for my website, who's a good horse to, to place my bet on for, um, for the future. And so the, the Water and Stone CMS Market Share Report, you know, identified Joomla as, as one of the top three players in the free open source content management system um, space, along with Drupal and WordPress. But it also noted some things that um, downloads and usage are decreasing for Joomla year over year. Um, as far as, uh, you know, there, there are some extenuating circumstances for some of these numbers. Um, they pointed out that in 2010 when they did their survey that there was a big community push within the Joomla community to go and, you know, say great things about Joomla and, and um, you know, give your positive feedback about it. That same push wasn't there in 2011, so there was kind of like, you know, a big promotion effort in 2010, less so in 2011, and that might have skewed the numbers. And with the, uh, the popularity of our demo site and some other, and some other factors, it probably um, underreports the number of downloads and usage. But, you know, those were the, the numbers that they reported from 2010 to 2011. Um, they define third-party support as decreasing. And their definition of third-party support was number of books that are published um, in print for the different content management systems. I think that's a pretty um, narrow view. Um, we've got, there's a lot of other different aspects of third-party community support. Um, and there's a lot of other ways to uh, publish books. And, uh, um, you know, we've got Hagen Groff here who publishes a lot of books um, in PDF and, and e-reader formats and, and gives them away. And, uh, you know, that isn't reflected at all in, in uh, the, the CMS reports. Uh, yes, sir? I don't know. 
Yeah, so the, what I was talking about there is that, um, you know, people that have searched for the word Joomla and, and um, Water and Stone did report on some of those metrics. I think that, um, you know, w my takeaway on that, and I think that Drupal has pretty much been steady and flat through that same period. Um, and so, you know, what we're seeing is that WordPress, to their credit, um, you know, they were they came out really focused initially as a blogging platform, and blogging's kind of one of the new killer apps, and not even new, maybe over the last few years. So they built a system that was purpose built to be great, simple, easy to use for blogging, and um, now reflected in those statistics, reflected in the market share. You know, there's a lot of people who like to use WordPress. They can use it for free. They can have it hosted for free on WordPress.com. So they've got a great business model around that. Um, there's a niche that Joomla fills. There's a niche that Drupal fills that are different. Um, and so there's room for all three. Um, but anyway, that's kind of my sense on that. Yes, sir. Yeah, that's a great point. If y'all didn't hear that, so Joomla so effective uh, with version 1.6, which Andy, when did that get released? So a little over a year ago, um, Joomla 1.6 was released, and that started a new release schedule for the project, whereas in the past, we'd kind of been making releases and this is a simplification but when features were ready then incremental releases would happen. Um, we made a change uh, from a philosophy standpoint to, to go to time-based releases so that every six months a major new release of Joomla would come out regardless of what you know whether we weren't going to tie it to features we were just going to tie it to time and so um, when you release a new a major new version of your software every six months it makes it tough in the print field especially right those, those books have a short lifespan the print field, is dying. The print field and and there's the man who who, who publishes books in in digital um, e-format um, and so you know you're right the the value of that metric print books in print is uh, over time I'll bet you will see that metric change um, so yeah, I think it also ties into you know our time-based release cycle ties into decreasing downloads for Joomla. There's there was a big jump or a big change you know, from version 1.5 on up. There's some backwards compatibility issues with that, and so there's a lot of people who haven't downloaded the newest version of Joomla yet because they've, they've got extensions that work on version 1.5 they might not work on version 2.5 which is what we've got now. Oh, that's okay. Andy? I think just addressing that is that, you know, I think one thing you're concerned about is, is that these numbers have been out there and it looks like there's not support for our conference. Right. And one of the, the problems that we had is we went from 1.6 to 1.7 to 2.5. And so it looks like those are totally completely different things. They're really, they're basically And so it wouldn't have been a good deal if we were 2.0 and 2.2 and 2.3. You would have thought, okay, I'm looking at the same thing, and that's what's going to be happening in the first of the So it's not going to be occurring. Yeah, our, our, our naming convention for the releases kind of 
caused a little, it caused some misunderstandings, some um, some questions, some uh, some uh, lack of lack of total complete understanding. So if you if you go to uh, magazine.joomla.org when Diane talks about the Joomla Community Magazine. Every month we've got a, a series of articles that are published by volunteers on that team as well as uh, it's open for submissions from members of the community and so that look for an article from Mark Dexter to give some more information about that. The Water and Stone CMS market share report also said that in terms of reputation that there was a decrease in brand sentiment and conversion rates and an increase in abandonment for Joomla year over year from 2010 to 2011. Some, again, some of these things all sort of tie in together, I think, and it's not, uh, you shouldn't uh, lose sight of, again, that significant fact, I think, that in 2010 there was a major push to get the word out for Joomla on that survey there wasn't that same push in 2011 so that probably skews the numbers some my preference would be for 2012 when their survey comes out we don't push it anymore you know so at least we've got sort of a level baseline from and we can we can see more clearly and more fairly how we do year over year instead of trying to make a big marketing or promotion push yes sir you know i Yeah, you know, um, that market share report goes into it, and I apologize that I, I hadn't studied it in enough granular detail to give you a good answer to that. I've got it installed on my laptop, and we can take a look at that later. But yeah, I think that uh, the way to define abandonment, I'm not sure I'd 100% agree with that either. I think there's always, you know, what is it that Mark Twain said? There's. Uh, um, lies, damn lies, and statistics, something like that. You know, you can kind of make statistics say just about anything you want. But that's a that's a good point, too. Um, in Drupal, there's a massive interest at the moment to be, to have a lot of marketing because now in Acquia there are 60 million venture capital. Yeah. And still today they earn no money. So, and it's now the fourth round. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's great, and that's that's really this yeah. point here, um, Hog. And thanks for sharing that. I want to do a time check, um, Jen. I've I've got till ten. Okay, thanks. Um, it's no, it's it's. It, I appreciate the questions and the interaction, and want to continue to do that. We may have a little less time for questions at the very end, but you know we'll just do it there. So this was, I think. This was a, a slide that I, I changed just this morning before coming over here in terms of the title, David and Goliath. I think it's not a very good metaphor. Um, maybe, uh, and, the, and the metaphor is that, you know, in addition to some of those challenges that Joomla has that were identified in the, in the uh, Water and Stone CMS market share report, Joomla as a project has some, um, has some challenges compared to some of the other players in the free open source content management system space. And so that's the David and Goliath idea, but it's really not a very good metaphor because Drupal and WordPress are, they're doing good things just like we are. They're giving away their soft more, software, they're, they're helping people to tell their stories on the web. Um, we collaborate together. I was at DrupalCon Denver last week for a day, made some friends, um, I have some friends in the Drupal Association. And so I think maybe uh, underdog would have been a better title for this slide um, as opposed to David and Goliath. But the, the point is, and it ties in with what H Hagen just said, um, Joomla as a purely community-driven, community-managed, community-powered project has some disadvantages compared to other uh, free open source content management systems. I, I say disadvantages. I mean, when I, as I look at this point, 
I think, well, really, hey, that's an advantage for Joomla. No benevolent dictator. And that really is part of the reason why I was really drawn to Joomla in the first place was because there wasn't anybody who was a benevolent dictator there. And so, but when I say it in the terms of a disadvantage, I really mean in terms of from an organizational, from a leadership standpoint, from a focus and a direction of the project. If you've got a benevolent dictator like Drupal has, like WordPress has, then at the end of the day, you've got somebody who can say, okay, we've had a debate, we've had a discussion, people see different sides to this issue, but this is the direction that we're going to take. And, um, and so it helps, I think, in terms of productivity to, to have a strong focus and direction. And Joomla doesn't really have that. I'm the president of Open Source Matters. Uh, as Jen mentioned, Open Source Matters leads in areas such as finance, legal, trademark, and some other areas. But um, uh, Joomla has, that's, it's just within that, those functions. Um, so Joomla doesn't have a benevolent dictator, and so we're all kind of co-equals in a sense. Um, some people have a, have a bigger voice than others because of their time with the project, their position in the project, um, but in theory, um, everybody has an equal place in the Joomla community. And that makes it, even though that's a great thing, it also sometimes makes it harder for us to resolve conflicts and issues and kind of move forward and have a clear focused direction. Oops. And another, another disadvantage that Joomla has compared to other big players in the, in the free open source content management system market is that we don't really have a, a primary business or corporate sponsor like Drupal has with Acquia or WordPress has with Automatic that can, has the resources to provide paid staff um, to, to do work, paid developers to do the work. Um, and financial resources to uh, to promote their projects um, compared to Joomla, and so um, those are some of the challenges that Joomla has in terms of. Uh, what was Joomla's budget last year, Paul? Uh, our budget last year was. Uh, Dead gummit, Jen. Uh, thank you. That's what I was. That's exactly what I was going to say. Um, so yeah, our, you know, we we, yeah, four hundred thousand dollars was our total budget. Um, and I got back from DrupalCon last week, and um, you know, saw that the uh, the revenue that they got from that was was like one point three million dollars. And so, and that was a that was a one week event. Um, and. So yeah, that gives you that gives you that was a, a major event for them um, in the United States, uh, but that gives a little little bit of comparison from that standpoint. Um, so I think really, you know, those are some of the, the there's a lot of other good things that are going on with with Joomla too, um, but that gives a little bit of a snapshot about some of the, the the positive things that are happening, some of the challenges that we face, and I think our our, our part of our challenge for 2012 is is especially taking a look at some of those items that were pointed out in the Water and Stone Market Share report. Is what can we do as a project? What do we need to do? In order to continue to grow and remain a leader in this in this space, um, you know, I'll, I'll take a step back from from my presentation and ask a different question, which is, why do we care about being a leader in this space? Um, maybe we're okay with uh, not being one of the top three free open source software content management systems in the world. And I think that's okay. The, the, uh, the, that is okay. And part of, uh, I think, the unspoken point to this presentation, to the situation that we're in, is really what do we collectively as a community want Joomla to become? Um, do we are we, do we want to just be happy to have a project where we welcome contributors and the 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 content management system our Joomla platform grows evolves changes at the pace to which we get those um, volunteer contributors and the, the kinds of features that they're willing to that they're able to contribute or do we want to try to push forward more aggressively 
and try to uh, you know really be at the forefront of innovation and uh, um, you know kind of get everybody to, to, to be working in the same direction more and, and pulling together in the same direction more. Um, and I think that, no, I don't think. I know that my, my personal feeling is more towards the second. I'd like to see, uh, I think we'll, we'll always have that, that volunteer spirit at the core and we're going to be always be dependent upon volunteer contributors to, to lead and shape the direction of Joomla. That's the way we want it to be. But I think we can also do better if we're all pulling in the same direction. And so I think that's part of our challenge for, for Joomla moving forward if we want to continue to stay on the forefront. And I think that's important for this reason, for us to try to stay on the forefront. More than uh, more than any other single factor and more than other leading free open source con content management systems, Drupal and WordPress, I think the Joomla project's future success is, is really depends on our ability to do two things, to attract and retain a large and diverse group of skilled volunteer contributors. And I say it, it's, it's, it's more so than other free open source projects because we don't have that level of corporate financial support, development support, things like that. We're totally dependent on volunteer contributors for, our, for our, from our development side now. And so, to me, you know, the volunteer contributors are our sole most valuable, most crucial resource. And um, if we can't do a good job of retaining, attracting and retaining volunteer contributors, then They'll, those people who are willing to contribute and volunteer their time are going to look at other projects and they're going to get stronger. Um, they're going to continue to grow and develop and innovate and Joomla will slow down in that respect. And I'd, personally, I'd like to see Joomla continue to be at the forefront of innovation and, um, and, and growth in the free open source content management system market. So I think with that point, about uh, you know the the most important point of our or most important need for our project is I, I would argue that that Joomla leadership's most important function is to create and support a culture that will will attract and retain that large and diverse group of skilled volunteer contributors that our future success depends on so much um, to the extent that we can do that effectively, then I think Joomla is, continue, is going to continue to be a strong, growing, vibrant project. To the extent that we can't do that, um, again, some of that energy will uh, and, and contributions will move to other projects. There's a lot of people in this room, there's a lot of people around the world who feed their families who earn their living using free Joomla software. There's, there's millions of um, there's millions of websites around the world that people are using for their for uh, you know, for their business, for their nonprofit organizations, for governments, Joomla is doing providing a really good service around the world, and it fits a niche that um, is is valuable to a, a large segment of users. I think WordPress, its strength is that it's simple and easy to use. It's great for blogging and kind of getting your story out that way. Drupal is great in terms of its power and flexibility. And, and uh, you know, you can come up with a really complex website with, with uh, um, very uh, difficult technical requirements in integration f um, with different features, and Drupal is good at that. Joomla fits in the middle a bit, I think, with our extensions and, and our ease of use. We're, uh, we're easier to use. We have a lower learning curve than Drupal does. We're probably not as easy to use as WordPress is. We recognize that we're trying to get better. But Joomla is a nice fit for a lot of, uh, uh, a lot of folks around the world. And um, you know, I think that you know, it's leadership's challenge to try to f create and foster and support that culture that will help allow us to continue to grow. Um, so what kind of culture is that, Paul? And I think the kind of culture that we need to create and support in order to attract and retain those, uh, 
you know, skilled volunteer contributors is that it has to be inspiring. Um, there has to be a, a, you know, a goal, a challenge that we're, that we see and that we work, we want to work towards and we want to achieve together as a community um, that people will want to become involved with, will want to join our community, will want to contribute to our project to say, I'm a part of this project, I helped make it better. Um, that it's meaningful work. And again, we're, to me, there's, uh, you know, I think for thousands of years, people have been gathering around telling stories. And that's what we, what we people to do now in the, in the internet age is to tell their stories all over the world in 60 different languages, millions of websites. And it's meaningful work that we're doing. Um, that it's an open culture where we're welcoming, we're warm, we're friendly. And, uh, there's a place for everybody who wants to contribute to, to make a meaningful contribution. We need to have a culture that's responsive. Um, uh, leadership can't, you know, here's where the bad side of a benevolent dictator is, right? Is if, you know, at the end of the day, uh, uh, the benevolent dictator may say, you know, this is what we're going to do, like it or not. Um, and in our project, I think we need to try to, if we're going to be effective or if we're going to develop that right kind of culture, we need to be more sensitive and more responsive to all the different variety of viewpoints. And, uh, and we need to be willing to interact. We need to be willing to have discussions and debates, even if it makes things take longer before we reach a decision. So that we know that everybody's not always going to agree with what the final decision is. But if nothing else, we need to have a culture where everybody has a chance to speak their mind and to share their views. Um, it needs to be a culture that's respectful. And, uh, and finally, it needs to be a culture that's fun. Um, to, at the end of the day, we need to we need to understand that uh, everybody's giving away their time, and if it's not fun, at some point, you know, maybe they'll continue to give away their time if their business depends on Joomla. Um, but a lot of people contribute just because they want to, and if we don't make the culture fun, then um, there's they'll just leave. And so those are some of the different elements that I think leadership needs to take responsibility for fostering and supporting that kind of culture. Now I'm going to talk about our current leadership structure. Um, and that'll lead into a, how well are we doing in some of those bullet points and what are some other ideas about how we can maybe make it better. We have Joomla has is organized into three different leadership teams. There's a production leadership team that leads on uh, items such as code development, documentation, translations, and they also manage some websites. We've got a community leadership team that leads on some aspects such as forums, directories, uh, the magazine, the J People site, Joomla user groups, and some websites. And then we've got Open Source Matters which leads in finances, legal, trademark, communications, events, shops, and some other websites. And then we've got a fourth branch, which is uh, the Community Oversight Committee, which is responsible for formally approving and, if needed, removing members of the Open Source Matters board. And there's that extra layer of structure in there because Open Source Matters is the legal owner of the Joomla trademark and the copyright of the for the code, even though it's uh, free and open source, there's still a copyright aspect to it. And because Open Source Matters kind of owns the financial aspects of the Joomla project, um, there's that extra layer of oversight there. Um, without going into details about it, I'll just say that there are some challenges with that current leadership structure that we have. Um, I'll be happy to talk in depth. Yeah, yeah, I did. You, thanks for catching that. Um, I, that's part of part of my implied point is that you know opportunities that we have to improve with the the uh, leadership structure changes or that we can simplify and streamline some things. Uh, the question was here, you know, it's some websites, some websites, some websites, no websites, and um, so um, 
That was kind of a little inside wink, wink joke. The, the community oversight committee, they're, they're quiet. They don't have any websites that they manage. They, they're just sitting there as the, kind of the over, oversight um, layer of the, of the Joomla project. Everybody else manages their websites and everybody else manages them differently and sometimes they don't all connect and coordinate as well as they could, but that was the... No, no, I'm not using Drupal, but thank you, thank you for asking. Um, so some of the challenges with our current leadership structure are that um, we set leadership team level goals as in the production leadership team, the community leadership team, open source matters, all set goals that are within their sphere of responsibility. But we don't have any uh, a way today that we all get together and we all uh, decide and agree on what some common leadership goals are for the entire project. And that ties back to that inspiring point. Um, that I gave earlier, and I think it's a weakness in our current structure. And second, we don't always coordinate well between the different teams, and there's really no process to address that. We can discuss and debate endlessly about different issues, and, and we don't have a way to kind of finally reach a decision that everybody always agrees on. Um, and then there's also, there can be a tendency, because of our kind of um, disc three discrete teams, um, there can be a tendency for those volunteers to focus on their team level responsibilities instead of looking at more complex project-wide issues that are harder to get agreement on. Um, and so to, to address that, back last summer we had a, uh, a, a joint leadership summit in San Jose, California where we talked about a new potential structure for the Juma project. I want to emphasize that this is just proposed. Um, but um, if nothing else, we'll show that you know we're we're recognizing that we've got some opportunities to improve, and, and here are some ideas that have come about to do that. We talked about reforming and creating a new board of directors uh, that would be charged primarily with overall goals and strategy and oversight for all committees. So to kind of give that central unified direction, strategy, purpose for the project, and also help address some of those issues about uh, not being able to reach agreements and, and resolve conflicts and discussion. So then the, the, the functions that are served within the three current leadership teams, we propose that we would uh, um, break those up into a number of committees that would all be more focused on different aspects of the work that's currently being done today and that they would all be accountable to that board of directors. So there would be uh, um, some of the benefits of that would be that it allows us to set and monitor progress for bolder and more inspiring project-wide goals, make it easier for all teams to follow and support a unified roadmap, provide a way to address and overcome inter-team conflicts, make room for new leaders, allow different, each different committee to have a stronger focus and reduce drama and increase productivity. <laughs> well, yeah. Um, and also to simplify some contractual issues. So I, I mentioned the point of uh, that these are proposed changes. We started this process, here's, here's sort of an object lesson in some of the struggles in governing a, a, a community-oriented free open source software project. Last July we had this conference and we came up with that proposal. Now here we are almost uh, you know, eight months later and we haven't acted on those proposals. We haven't made a decision on them. We've discussed them a lot and, and asked for feedback from the community, but we haven't finalized anything. So we've got a, we formed a working group that's uh, going to study the issue and present some recommendations. Jeremy Wilkin in the back is, is a member of that working group. We've got uh, volunteers from uh, the community leadership team and Open Source Matters along with a couple other members from the community who are going to take some time and really try to lock in and focus and, and look at some of the different issues about how, how we would make a new leadership structure work. Does that proposal that I showed earlier, does it really make the most sense? Are there other ways that might be better? Um, and then we're going to have another joint leadership summit at the J and Beyond conference in May that'll, that will consider the recommendations given by that working group and hopefully reach a final decision about what we're going to do for this next phase of Joomla. Um, so finally, it leads to uh, uh, you know, what the whole point of the leadership structure changes is, is not so that we can um, have a, a, a neater organizational chart, but so that we can 
accomplish our goals and accomplish our mission. And to me, what my dream for trying to um, implement a better leadership structure is really this. Uh, for us to show what can be achieved when a diverse group of passionate volunteer contributors from all over the world are fully empowered and connected for the purpose of continually innovating, supporting, and sharing our community-powered software. That's my, you know, remember that mission statement I started at the, at the, at, with at the beginning? That's my mission statement for the Juma project. And I think if we have a new leadership structure that it won't make the code better by itself, but it'll allow the community to um, rally together, to join together, to connect together, to be more empowered, to um, help strengthen our project, strengthen our code, and make it better. Um, thanks. Um, we're, we're the two words that I put in um, italics and bold, connected, and um, and sharing. Uh, I just want to close with the thought that you know that's what this Joomla day is all about. It's about connecting and it's about sharing. And so it's it's great to be a part of this. Um, and let's make the most of of, of our time here today and uh, to connect and to share and to learn and to grow. Um, this is a package of Stroop waffles. I don't know if anybody's ever heard of Stroop waffles. If you haven't ever had them, um, I've got a package and I want to share them. These came from the Netherlands from a friend, um, Marika Stoivenberg, who at the request of her other friend, Diane Henning, um, uh, said, let's, let's send these to Paul and, and they, they sent them to me and, and I want to share them. I think that uh, you know, they taste great, um, they're fun, and, uh, uh, and that's what, part of what Joomla represents to me too. So I'm, the bad news is I've only got a pack of 12 here to share. So um, I think Hagen and, and Christine get a, get a, get a Stroop waffle for coming the farthest for this Joomla day. And uh, let's try to um, be fair and share all the rest of them. Anyway, I think we'd, you know, I'm, we're out of time now, so thanks for the questions that you guys had and the comments that you guys had. We'll be available later this afternoon if you have more questions and throughout the day, and I'd love to talk to you more about that. Thanks for your time. Let's have a great day today. Nice job. Thank you.